be back in the Lord's house this evening. Like I said, we appreciate each one that's come out to be with us tonight. We just ask you to mind the Spirit of the Lord. Whatever God bids you to do, that's what we ask of you to do tonight. So maybe somebody has a special song on your heart, something you'd like to say or do for the Lord this evening. Come on up, sis. singing this song for a little bit and I thought well I hadn't done anything for the Lord for a while so I thought I'd try it and Jens, Jens pray for me because uh, it's a little intimidating <laughs> I was working in town one afternoon, tending some business affairs. I heard a commotion a couple streets over and wondered what's happening there. A young man was running from in that direction and stopped just to catch his breath. I asked him to please tell me what was the hurry. He smiled up at me and he said, I was trying to catch. <coughs> Let's start over. <coughs> I prayed if I should do it or not because I don't want to be seen or heard. But, uh,. <coughs> Obviously, it's going to be a little bit of a battle. We're going to start over. I was working in town one afternoon, tending some business affairs. I heard a commotion a couple streets over and wondered what's happening there. A young man was running from in that direction and stopped just to catch his breath. I asked him to please tell me what was the hurry. He smiled up at me and he said, I was trying to catch the crippled man. Did he run past this way? He was rushing home to tell everyone what Jesus did today. And the mute man was telling myself and the deaf girl he's leaving to answer God's call. It's hard to believe, but if you don't trust me, ask the blind man, he saw it all. Ask the blind man, he saw it all. So my friend, if the troubles and burdens you carry are heavy and dragging you down. You've tried everything you can possibly think of. There's no relief to be found. That very same Jesus that altered the future of a blind man, the deaf and the lame, is still reaching out in your hour of trouble. One touch and you're never the same. You'll be trying to catch the crippled man. Did he run past this way? He was rushing home to tell everyone what Jesus did today. And the mute man was telling myself and the deaf girl he's leaving to answer God's call. It's hard to believe. But if you don't trust me, ask the blind man, he saw it all. Ask the blind man, he saw it all. Amen. Amen. Appreciate that. I'm glad. I'm glad what the, the miracles that God can do. Thank you. Amen. Anybody else tonight got something on your heart, something you'd like to do?
tonight. Now don't miss out on a blessing. I promise you God's got room for you and time for you. Hearts and minds clear. This is our Wednesday night Bible study. We always open up the altar prayer. So before we do that, maybe somebody has a special object of prayer on your heart. Good to be saved. Uh-huh. Man, anybody else? We got Baylor on here. Do remember all those? Anybody else? Uh, Josh Jones, brother Eddie said that he, had, Josh, had, brother Josh had fell and broke his foot. I guess it. Do remember him? Anybody else? Hey Amen. Let's remember this. Anybody else? If not, there's much on our prayer list to be in prayer about and do be much in prayer for each and every one of those. Pray for all the revivals that's going on. Uh, we've got revivals going on around us. We've got revivals coming up here. Revival begins here Sunday. Uh, so you be praying about that. And God just move mightily here. Uh, then next Sunday, the, the we'll be off, we'll, so next Sunday night, we'll be at Pine Branch. And then on Tuesday, Monday and Wednesday, we'll be at Mountain View preaching in revival over there with Brother Derek Wilson. So uh, I'm going to have to put up with him for two weeks, it looks like. So uh, you be much in prayer for all those things going on. And we just want to serve the Lord and what God would have us to do. Pray for us as we have to travel about. We'll be in Knoxville, been in Knoxville yesterday, or was in Knoxville Monday, and we'll be back in Knoxville tomorrow. So or it was in Tuesday and Thursday this week. So you pray for us. That's uh, where Brother James Henson goes. Over where Brother James Henson goes. Over what that Flatwood, whatever that area over there is. Huh? Top of the third, bottom of the Flatwoods, in the middle of nowhere. If you get to any of those places, I'm sure you're in the right place. I'm preaching on, I'll be preaching on Monday night and on Wednesday night. On Wednesday night, Brother uh, Daniel Jones, Brother Daniel Jones will be here to fill in for us here on Wednesday night. That'll be the 19th. So uh, we'll be over there on the 17th and 19th. So got a lot of traveling, a lot of things going on, but God knows what need is needed. And uh, we just, uh, we have a special unspoken request on on our heart tonight, just ask you to pray for it, and uh, God knows what that is. So everybody that can and will, will gather around the altar. And yeah. 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 Amen. Let's remember this request. Let's all gather around the altar. Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight, Lord, to assemble ourselves before thee. 
Lord, we thank you for another day. We thank you for another opportunity, God, just to be able to come out to your house and in, be in your presence and be around your people and fellowship, Lord. I pray to heavy Father that you'll just touch each one that's on this prayer list. I pray for Ralph Mink, Diane Eisenhower, Dolores Anderson, Brooke Hutchison, Clifton and Adams, Ree Harry, Louise Markham, Joe and Mary Bishop, Kevin Bernard, the Reason family, Jim Perry, Rosie Osborne, uh, David Wilson, Carter Harris, Kennedy Greer, Ashley Wyatt, Brendan Norris, Jalen Sutherland, Daniel Furches, Danny McAuley, Mildred Pass, Blake Atwood, Joan Pope, Faye Church, Mary Bailey, uh, David Holloway, Clara Hurd, Robbie Phillippe, Dakota Benfield, Harold and Shirley Rash, Stanford Humphrey and wife, Nathan Campbell, pray for Baylor tonight, God, just help him to not get sick, Lord, to, uh, to get over this quickly. We pray for Josh Jones, Bob Heck, Andy Lowe, uh, David Burnett, Ryan, Mike Reynolds, Molly, uh, Holly McFadden, uh, Eddie and family. We pray for Ebenezer Christian Home. We pray for Brother Ross Dow, Luella Dunn, Dennis and Hazel, De uh, Dorothy Keller, Di uh, Danny Buchanan, Cindy White, Lucas Perdue. Terry Reed, Bud Crosswhite, uh, Harley Rankin, Ben Bowers, uh, Kenny and Jane Head, Ed Ham, Sandra Moorfield, La uh, Lane Miller, Francis Brooks, Laura Hart. We pray for the nursing home of uh, all those up there, Lord. Uh, Kenny Walton, uh, Brendan Lunsford, Tracy Courtner, uh, Miss Day, Eden Eisenhower and the baby, uh, Chuck Moorfield and family, Zach Whitehead, uh, Leanna Vault. Uh, we pray for revivals, Lord, uh, that everywhere and here, God, that you just stir up a great fire. Michelle Worley, David Ward, pray for our wife, Lord, and her surgeries and things that she has coming up, God, you'll just touch there. Benji Watson, Tommy Jack Shown, Joe Dalt, Benny Moorfield, Adrian Key, Elaine Kirby, Aaron Steele, Randy Lewis, Emily Church, Steve Kress, Russell Cornett, Delmer, Wendell Carraway, Marie Jennings, Greg uh, Stout. June Brady, Don Garrett's family, Lord. Uh, we pray for David Holloway, Teresa McAuley, Margaret Eisenhower, Bob Miller. We pray for the church, God, to continue to help it to grow. Lord, be with every service, God, that we could reach this dying and lost community. And Lord, we pray for John Yates, Joseph Brort, uh, Kathy McFadden, Brittany and the baby. We pray for uh, Tucker, God, to continue to bless him. Uh, William Williams, Justin Miranda and the boys, Lester Dunn. Pray for uh, Brother Danny Burnett tonight, Lord, you'll help him. Lord, I pray for the reading of thy word. I pray for your study of it, God. You'll help us to open it to our mind and to our heart. And we give you the glory. Be with it, uh, Jason, and as they go in the back. Everything that happens here, Lord, may we put you first in all things and we give you the glory. Not our will be done, but thine. In Jesus' blessed name I pray. Amen. Does anybody know of anyone on here that can be removed? If you do, let me know and we'll take them off. And got that one? Good deal. Anybody else? Do what now? Yeah. 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 Right. Good deal, good deal. That's right. You check on him and then we'll take them off. We need to pray for them. We pray for them. I mean, hey, look, we'll make, if we have to go on the back, we'll go on the back. I mean, hey, everybody needs prayer. I need your prayer, amen. We all need prayer. There's nothing greater that we can have other than our salvation than, than somebody praying for us, amen. Aren't you glad somebody prayed for you? Amen. amen. Ain't you glad somebody prayed for you? I'm glad somebody prayed for me. And I'm, I'm, I'm very thankful that somebody that people continue to pray for me. If you've quit praying for me, start back. Why'd you stop? Hey, man, I'm telling you, we need prayer. Uh, we live in a time when, when we're fighting the devil. I, told, I was talking with somebody today, and I told them uh, uh, that uh, we live on a battlefield. Hey, man. We live on a battlefield, and we should not have to come in here 
and fight the same battles in here that we fight out there. Amen. This is not the battlefield. This is the mess hall. This, is, this, this here is the armory. This here is the, is the medic tent. Amen. Uh, this is the place we come get healed. This is the place we come get re, uh, refurbished. This is the way we, place we come to get uh, strength. Those are the things that we come here to get tonight. Amen. Uh, those are the things that we are, are glad that the, the Lord has given us and uh, that he allows us to have a place that we can come and do that. And uh, I just thank him for that. Turn me down just a little bit, Travis. I'm roaring up here in my ears, and I, I know if I'm roaring up here, I'm bound to be roaring at you. And I got to turn you on, don't I? I don't even have, I don't even Don, I don't even have him on, and he's already holding his ear. So, uh, but uh, we're over in the book of Galatians, chapter number one. I think we got down to about verse number 12 last week is where we got through, and we'll pick back up here at verse number 13. And this is some portion of scripture here in the end uh, this is Paul's message uh, uh, letting back to the, the Galatians there and letting them know that his message is where they come from amen uh, they're not coming from man now you can go out there and get man's message and I was talking to a guy this week as well and you know there's a lot of people that call themselves preachers that can get up and speak but that's not preaching, amen? Now, now, look, you can have all forms of preaching. I don't say that everybody has to be as loud and uh, as I am. I know I'm pretty loud. Uh, people don't have to preach the way I preach. But I can tell you this, there's a difference in teaching, there's a difference in speaking, uh, and there's a difference in preaching, amen? Uh, and I think Paul needed. Paul was preaching unto him, uh, and, and people were, uh, the, the, he didn't preach exactly like everybody else, so they, they wanted to, uh, poke at him and say that it come from somewhere else but you might get your message somewhere but your message better come from God amen uh, your message better come from the Lord uh, and if it's not coming from God what good is it amen uh, it's not going to help us any of you just getting somebody's opinion and we know everybody's got an opinion right amen uh, uh, everybody likes to put their two cents in but I want to get all of what God has for us. But we'll pick up back down here at verse number 13. The Bible says down here in verse number 13, For we have heard, uh, for ye have heard of my conversation in time past uh, in the Jews' religion, uh, and how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God uh, and wasted it. Uh, I want you to get a grip. This is what Paul's saying. Uh, uh, Paul, Paul's, getting, Paul's going to give you a little bit of his testimony, amen, if you, if you would right here. Uh, he's going to give a little bit of his testimony about who he used to be. Uh, ain't you glad, let's just say right here tonight before we go any further, uh, ain't you glad that you're not what you used to be, amen? Uh, ain't you glad that you don't have to continue down the same road that you used to be? Look, if you're still doing the same things you used to do, uh, and then I would check up, amen, you didn't get what I got, amen. Uh, uh, God changes things, he changes people, uh, and he'll change you, not only, he, can, he, he don't go back and change your past, uh, but he sure does change your future, uh, he'll change you from that point on. Does that mean we always live sinless? Absolutely not. Uh, does it mean we always do what we're supposed to do? Absolutely not. Uh, but we can be different, amen. Uh, uh, our, 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 our actions and things ought to be different than what they used to be. Uh, Paul said, you can go back in my conversations of times past, amen, uh, when he was under the Jewish religion. Uh, in other words, back when he was out persecuting uh, uh, the church, uh, he said there in verse 13, he said, you heard my conversation times past uh, in the Jewish religion, how that beyond measure he persecuted the church, uh, 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 the church of God, uh, and wasted it, amen. Uh, what does that mean? He went out to do everything he can uh, to set against God and his church. Uh, he went out to do everything he can, uh, could, uh, hey, to stop the religion, to, to stop Christians uh, from worshiping God, uh, and to stop this thing from spreading all over. Uh, look, we've got a lot of Pauls today, amen. Uh, we've got a world full of, Paul, of, 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 of Pauls today. Uh, uh, before, when he was on that road to Damascus, that uh, uh, before he was converted, uh, we have a lot of those out there that are doing everything they can to hinder and stop the work of God. Uh, then we have a lot of them that are doing it and don't even know that they're doing it. Amen. Uh, 
a lot of times we'll hinder the work of God and hinder the service of God by not fully giving in to what the Lord wants us to do, by not fully surrendering our life to the Lord. Listen, one of the worst things for a lost person is a Christian that's half in and half out. Amen? For somebody to live their life and say that they're a saved child of God, but live like the world, act like the world. I was talking to somebody a few weeks ago, and this guy had that they were uh, uh, a couple were I think they were playing golf or something and, and this uh, one guy asked that other guy he said does this guy go to church and the other boy asked he didn't say nothing but he knew that that boy that other guy was supposed to be a deacon at another church amen <laughs> now, let me just tell you something now, the way that we carry ourselves and the way we carry our lives it matters amen it hurts and hinders those out there. Now, Here's the what I'll tell you. If it's no wonder that say I don't want to go down there with a bunch of hypocrites. Amen. Now listen, that's one of the lamest excuses you'll ever hear when you ask somebody to go to church. Because they'll stay home with a bunch of hypocrites. Uh, they'll go to work with a bunch of hypocrites. Uh, they'll hang out with a bunch of hypocrites, but they don't want to go to church with a bunch of hypocrites. Amen. Uh, problem is, they is one, I guess. They don't want to go down there with some more of them. Uh, but here's what I tell you. Uh, it matters. The worst thing you can do um, is, to, is to, uh, to live that way because people will say, why would I go down there? Uh, and go to church, they're no better than I am. Absolutely, we're no better than you are. We don't claim to be better than anybody else. Hey, if there's anybody around that claims to be better, I'm telling you what you're doing, you're setting yourself up for a fall, amen? You're setting yourself up for a trip. Paul said right here, he said, remember my conversation in time past? I went out to hinder everybody. Look, I don't want to be a hindrance to nobody. I don't want to be a hindrance in the in the work of God. Hey, we are to be careful of all the things that we say. We have to be careful of the things that we do. And our actions are very, you know that old saying, do as I say and not as I do. How well did that work out in your life? Not too good, amen. Because they would do exactly what you tell them not to do. They'll do exactly what you do. They'll act the way that you say they don't want you to act. You'll go out there and you'll say, well, don't do that. But then yet you go and you act like you want to act like a goody two-shoe on Sunday. But you want to act like the world everywhere else. God didn't save us to be chameleons and fit in everywhere. Amen. The Bible plainly tells us to be ye separate and come out from among the world. Amen. For us to be different than everybody else and different from the world. Why? So they'll want what we've got. Hey, if we look like them and act like them and talk like them, we might as well be one of them. Amen. Paul said, remember, in times past, my conversation was his former conduct. Amen. I, I, I'm glad I can say there's things that I used to do that I don't do. Amen. Now, I ain't talking about the things we've got too old to do, Ross. I ain't talking about the things. Melissa and I was talking, coming up the road, she said something about somebody getting her, talking about her mom, uh, I think she's going to be, uh, be turning 77 or something. I said, you realize in February I'll be 53. I said, I can't believe that. Amen. Uh, I said, in my mind, it doesn't, my mind doesn't tell me I'm 53. Now, sometimes my body tells me I'm 53. But my mind doesn't work that way. Amen. I told her, I was hoping I'd be like Caleb over there when they come out, when they come through, come to the promised land. Caleb was 80, almost 86 years old when he got to the promised land. Uh, and he started to go up the mountain. He said, I'll take that mountain up there, Mount, old Mount Horeb. Uh, I'll preach this one of these days. But he said, I'll go up there and take that. That's the land where the giants were. Amen. Uh, and Caleb said, uh, he said, he said, how, he said he, how old he was, and he was about 86 years old. Uh, and he said, I'm as strong today uh, as I was when I left Egypt. Uh, and he said, I, I serve the same God uh, that I serve today uh, that I serve when I left Egypt. Uh, hey, I'm telling you, that's the way we are to be. Uh, hey, we are, we may not, I may not be strong in stature uh, uh, as I used to be, uh, but I ought to be a whole lot stronger spiritually uh, than I used to be uh, because I've seen God uh, do a whole lot of things. 
I'm glad I've got a past. Hey, that is past. I'm got a glad I've got a past. Hey, that I don't do no more. Look, if you still do them, still tied up in those things, then you got problems. But nothing that can't be fixed right there. Amen. Nothing that can't be fixed on an altar. And Paul said, there on, we will go on down. Verse number 14. He said in verse 14, he said, and profited in the Jews, religion above, my, uh, above many of my equals in my own nation, before being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers. And Paul said, in other words, Paul had a desire in his heart. He had, Paul had some what we would call ambition. Amen. Now, he had goals and he wanted, he was zealous. That means that he was determined. Now, he had ambition to, to, to learn in the Jewish tradition. Now, and you'll find out, we can read just a bunch of scriptures over in the book of Acts and other places that that'll tell us that uh, about how he was a Pharisee of the Pharisees and a Hebrew of the Hebrews. Uh, he studied and learned with the best uh, and he excelled beyond uh, uh, those that was in his class, those that were in his age group, uh, those that was probably above him. Uh, he excelled in all of those things. Uh, uh, he said over in the book of Acts chapter 22 and verse 3, he said this, uh, he said, I am verily a man, which I, which I, which am a Jew, uh, born in Tarsus, a city of Sicily, uh, yet brought up uh, up to this city uh, at the feet of Gamaliel, uh, and taught according to the perfect manner of the law of the fathers, uh, and was zealous toward God, uh, 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 as ye are this day. Uh, and it goes on in, verse, in chapter 26, uh, which knew me from the beginning, uh, it, it would testify that after the most se- uh, straightest of sects uh, uh, of our religion, I live a Pharisee. Uh, and it goes on, since I verily, the, I verily thought myself uh, that I ought to do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Uh, in other words, it was up to him, uh, hey, to do everything that he could, uh, hey, to stop these things. He said in the book of Phil- uh, uh, the Philippians, this, uh, he said, circumcised on the eighth day this, of the stock of Israel, uh, of the tribe of Benjamin, uh, of a Hebrew of Hebrews, uh, as touching the law of a Pharisee, uh, concerning zeal, uh, persecuting the church, uh, touching the righteousness uh, with the, which is the law, blameless, amen, uh, in other words, what Paul's saying, he said, there ain't nobody uh, that advanced more than I advanced, uh, there's no more body that grew faster than I grew, uh, and there's nobody that did more, uh, hey, to, to, to dis- dis- destroy uh, or detour uh, or, 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 or to prevent people from becoming Christians than I did, uh, but thanks be unto God, amen, uh, not what I used to be, amen, uh, I was uh, thinking when she was singing that song, uh, about how the blind man saw it all. Uh, but I was not only about the blind man. Uh, I seen about every single person uh, that she sung about there. Uh, you know what was, di- what, what was going on in that song? Uh, every single one of them uh, got changed. Amen. Uh, every single one of them uh, got changed. And that's what we need to realize today. Is, hey, we've got a past. We've got a past. Paul knew. Paul knew what the past was. He knew about studying the law. Here's the problem. Now, now at this point in time, they didn't have anything but the Old Testament. They had the law. But here's what we don't realize and what they don't A Pharisee, what do we know about the Pharisees? They was the religious group, right? They were the religious ones, the ones that taught. You know what they taught? They taught law but they also taught tradition. They taught law interpreted the way that it had been interpreted under them. They taught law the way uh, that men had brought it down to them. They didn't just, not everybody had a Bible like you have today. And even those that could access and read the word, uh, it was not given unto them as freely as it is given unto us today because you don't know how, they didn't know how to interpret it. Uh, They had to have the priests to interpret it as what they thought. Uh, But here's what Paul will say in other places. Uh, Paul will tell you this. uh, Hey, that if you'll read the Old Testament, uh, 
every bit of that Old Testament, uh, all throughout the Old Testament, uh, you'll find uh, that it points toward the cross of Christ uh, and His coming. Amen? Uh, all of that points toward Him. Uh, Paul said, I learned from the best. Amen? Uh, I studied at the feet of the masters. Uh, hey, but I can tell you, uh, what really matters uh, is coming to know the Lord and meeting Him and having a personal uh, 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 relationship with Him and having your life completely changed. Uh, Verse 15 says this, but when, it, but when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace. Amen. I think we've stopped right there. Amen. And we talk about the grace of God all night. Every day of how much grace has passed through our life. Every day uh, what the grace of God has done in our life. Uh, he, said, uh, he, said, he said right there, uh, but it pleased God. Amen. Uh, here's what I want you to get a grasp of. Uh, there's a lot of people in this world may have wrote you off. Uh, there's a lot of people in this world may have done away with you and just said there ain't no hope for you. Uh, but it pleased God. Amen. Uh, hey, that he might come looking for you. Uh, it pleased God. Uh, hey, he said, who separated me uh, from my mother womb. You know what that means? Uh, that means, in other words, uh, that uh, just like it said in the Old Testament, uh, that he knew, David said he knew me uh, in my mother's womb. Uh, you know what this is saying here? Uh, that even though Paul uh, had done everything he could uh, to run away, uh, ever though he had done everything he could uh, to stop the Christian movement, uh, God knew at some point, uh, at some time, uh, that he was going to change. Uh, he knew that there was hope. There was grace poured out in his life hey, to give him that opportunity. I'm glad for grace coming by my way and giving me an opportunity to get off the road that I was on and become something different, and become something new. That's God. That's God. He knew who he was. He knew what he was going to be. Look, that's all that's even more amazing to me is God knew what I was. He, he didn't wait for me to change things. He didn't wait for me to get things fixed. Amen? He didn't give me the number of some uh, local place that might be able to, some sci, uh, psycho, I mean psychologist, uh, hey, that might be able to help me with my problem. He didn't give me some 1-800 number to call and it'll fix everything you got. You know what he did? He changed me from the way I was. He came to me just like I was. The Bible says uh, he comes seeking to save those which was lost. Amen. Uh, I was over there, uh, but I is over here. Amen. Uh, I'm glad that I've had a past uh, that I can say is in the rear view. Uh, things that I used to do, uh, things that I don't do no more, amen. Uh, I'm glad that God shed his grace in my life, uh, and I'm glad that he knew. Uh, hey, even when I did, there was, when it looked like there was no hope for me, uh, I'm glad he knew uh, that there was something we could do. But don't you think he knows there's something you can do? Look, there's always something that we can do. God has a plan for us. If God was through with you, you wouldn't be here. Amen. If God was through with you, you wouldn't be here. Paul said there in that verse number 15, he said, He know, he, he said, for it said, it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace. Called by his grace. Amen. Many are called and few are chosen. I believe the calls went out. A lot of people want to say somebody's got this. There's some special group. Well, I'll tell you what that special group is. You, you ever wonder what that special group of chosen ones are? I'm going to let you in on a little secret who they are right now. It's every child of God. Amen. It's everyone that's been saved by the grace of God. You've been chosen. Amen. God called a lot, uh, but only a few become a part of the chosen. Uh, only a few become that way. Uh, why? It's his will that none perish, uh, but all become under repentance. Uh, it's his will that all become chosen. Uh, the problem is uh, uh, too many uh, are leaving out, uh, but uh, leaving out is not, is not accepting the Lord of their own free will. Here's what I want to tell you. 
A lot of people today wonder why God would send anybody to hell. I want you to get this. Hell, there's not one person in hell that God rejected. Not one. It is full of people that rejected him. It is not one person down there that God said, no, no, I'm not going to save you. There's not one person down there that said, nah, I know who you are. I know what you've done. I can't accept you. There's not one of them. How would you feel if God did that? He wouldn't be a just God, would he? He wouldn't be a fair God, would he? You know how I know? Now, how fair would a God be? Hey, did he accept Johnny Stout and then not accept you? Amen. Uh, how, well, how good a God would he be? Uh, hey, did he accept Ross Stout, but he wouldn't accept me? Uh, hey, I tell you, how good a God would he be uh, that he take me, uh, as Paul said, the cheapest of sinners, uh, but he didn't take somebody else. Uh, I'm glad uh, that by the grace of God, uh, it pleased him, uh, hey, to have us all. Has ever had bad, never eye closed, never kissed a friend, never heart shaken? What a God we serve. He is an amazing God. So I ask you today, how is it with you? Do you know the Lord as your Savior? Look, as far as I know, everybody in this room today is saved and ready to go. But what I need you to know is that which is in your heart. Don't matter what I believe. Don't matter what I know. It matters what you know. I want you to know tonight this altar is open for anyone for any reason. Anybody need to come? Maybe you need to draw up a little closer to God. Maybe you got some things going on in your life. Don't matter. You'll find help down here on an altar. You'll find help right here in the house of God. I'm so thankful that He gave us a good place to come and worship. That he gave us a good place to come and lay our burdens down. Maybe you're here tonight and maybe you've got something you need to pray about. Somebody you need to pray for. Would you come? Would you come before we pray? Anybody else tonight need to come? She's going to finish up playing this verse. Anybody need to come? Brother Dennis, you pray for us. Amen. We appreciate you tonight. Maybe somebody's got a word or a testimony on your heart.
Anybody else before we have this prayer? If not, anybody that can and will, we'll gather around the altar. We'll go to the Lord in prayer. We'll pray for this Francis Brooks. We don't, may not know all the situation, but God knows all about it. Shake somebody's hand and tell them you love them. God bless you.